So in thinking about the scripture passage from the book of Acts that Andy read for us this morning, I have to admit that sometimes I wish we didn't have any miracle stories. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love miracle stories. I think they are absolutely wonderful and beautiful and, of course, miraculous. Come on, that was a little funny. All right, fair enough. No, I really do. But sometimes, though, as a minister and even as a Christian, miracle stories can uh, create problems. Uh, the story for today that we have is a beautiful story, one that I, I love. Uh, and uh, it is a story about Peter and about John. This is in the early days after the resurrection, and they are traveling to the temple. On their way to the temple, they see a man. The scripture tells us that this man has been lame since birth. Uh, he cannot walk. In fact, he has to have people carry him to the temple gate every day. And there, every day, he begs. He depends upon the kindness of others, hoping for alms, hoping for money so he can go and buy bread and have something to eat that day. And as he is lying there by the gate, because that's all he can do, he is begging for money. He sees Peter and John, and Peter says to him, I have no silver or gold, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. And of course he does. Not only does he get up, he jumps up and he's dancing and he's praising God. And we are told that everyone there praised God for the miracle that had occurred. Miracles are wonderful. They are wonderful. They are happy stories. And did you know, did you know that there are lots of miracles in the Bible? That should be a little funny to y'all too, because surely you knew that there are lots of miracles in the Bible, right? I mean, scripture is rife with stories of miracles. Beginning back in the Hebrew scriptures, we have the story of Elijah. Elijah who raised the widow of Zarephath's son back to life. We have the story of Elisha who healed Naaman, the Aramean of leprosy. In the New Testament, we have countless stories of Jesus. It seems like he's always healing the sick, uh, making the blind to see, the lame to walk, and on and on and on. And then we have Peter, who later on, actually I think it's Paul later on in the book of Acts, who actually brings a young man back to life after he had been bored to death by a sermon. It's true. I keep mentioning it. One of these days y'all are going to figure out where it is in the book. There, there are healings and miracles all throughout Scripture. And they're all wonderful, happy endings. And that's just the miracles that we talk about in Scripture. Have you ever thought about all the miracles that have occurred since the time of the Bible? Did you know that in the Roman Catholic Church, there are over 10,000 saints? That's a lot of saints. And in the year 1234, that's when they started to make the process of canonization, the process of becoming a saint official. Before then, people could just kind of like start calling people saints. But in 1234, the Catholic Church made an official process for how one becomes a saint. It was a long time ago, a thousand years ago. And part of that process means for a person to become a saint, they have to have at least two verified miracles attributed to them. Unless they died a martyr, then they only need one. But if you, if, so you have to have at least one, if not two, verified miracles attributed to you to become a saint. And a verified miracle is one that is checked out. That is checked out sometimes even by people who are not Catholic, by scientists. A verified miracle is something that happens that cannot be explained by scientific norms of the society. It has no logical rationale. And almost all of those miracles that are attributed to these saints, almost all of them are medical in nature. So majority of these miracles are all healing miracles. And I would wager to bet that if it is a healing that cannot be described through science. It is a healing with a happy ending. Don't you think? Miracle stories are wonderful. But sometimes I wish we didn't have them. I guess 
it would be more appropriate to say that uh, I wish we didn't have healing stories about people uh, other than Jesus performing healings. I mean, Jesus should definitely perform the healings, right? Son of God, Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one. Obviously, Jesus should have performed all of the miracles and healings that he did perform. The real problem, though, comes in when people who are not Jesus perform these miracles. Normal people get to perform miracles. I mean, Peter, now granted, Peter was a pretty amazing human being. He was a disciple, all that kind of stuff. He was Simon Peter, Petrus, the rock upon whom Jesus built the church. But he was still a perfectly flawed human being. Just a guy who had made countless mistakes in his life. And yet he got to perform miracles. So if somebody, a normal person, just as flawed as me or as any of the rest of us, got to perform miracles, and all of those other people throughout the years, all of those saints who are just normal, flawed people, exceptional but flawed people, if all of those people got to perform miracles, then why don't we get to perform miracles? In T.H. White's book, The Once and Future King, you've probably heard me reference it before. I will probably do it again. The character of Lancelot is obsessed with being able to perform miracles. One could argue that it is his defining characteristic that he wants to be able to perform miracles because he knows that ordinary people other than Jesus can perform miracles. When people want a miracle, it's because they are in dire circumstances. And when you are in dire circumstances, you hope for a miracle. But the problem is, when anybody gets to perform miracles, miracles become something less than what we hope for, and they become something that we expect, or something that we think we deserve. That's what happened to Lancelot in The Once and Future King. He was convinced. He was convinced that if he could do and say all of the right things, if he could lead the life of a truly heroic knight, then surely God would grant him the ability to perform miracles. And you know, we've probably been in the same boat before. I don't know if you've ever actually wanted to perform a miracle, but you have probably been in a place in your life when you really wanted a miracle. If you have ever had tragedy in your life, chances are you have been in a place in your life when you really wanted a miracle. But whenever tragedy hits our lives or uh, whenever illness strikes a loved one, that's when we find out how little control we have in our lives. When our bodies don't behave the way they're supposed to behave, that's when we know how little control that we have. And so we try to control something. We want to control something. Um, I was at a church one time where there was a parishioner who was going through some pretty extensive uh, chemotherapy And we were all sitting around uh, at a family night supper trying to decide, you know, are there certain dishes we can take from here to him that would go well, that he'd like, that maybe he would enjoy eating, that maybe would be all right on his stomach and all these things. And uh, there was another parishioner there who was a cancer survivor and had been through some pretty extensive chemotherapy himself. And he said, you need to take him some mac and cheese. Why mac and cheese? Because it comes up the easiest. It was kind of like that. Some people were uncomfortable. Some people kind of giggled a little bit. Well, they took mac and cheese. They took mac and cheese to the parishioner who was going through chemotherapy. And when it was explained to him why it was mac and cheese, he laughed hysterically. Because it was good, practical advice dealing with those things over which we no longer have any control. But so often we are so desperate to regain control of those situations that we convince ourselves that there are certain things that we can do. 
You know, we come up with these miracle formulas. If we pray hard enough, if we do the right things, if we are righteous enough, then God will grant us that miracle. That's what Lancelot believed. Because if other people have been able to achieve it, if God had let other people perform miracles, then maybe there's something we can do to get that miracle in our place as well. You see, it would be so much easier if all of the miracles stopped with Jesus. If all of the miracles were confined to the time that Jesus walked physically on the earth, it would be so much easier for me. Because then I would never have to answer the question of why did God let my child die? Or why has this happened to me? Because I could always just say, well, outside of the presence of Jesus, the physical presence of Jesus, there are no miracles. But that's not the case, is it? People other than Jesus get to perform miracles as well. You know, I guess the real problem isn't necessarily miracle stories. I mean, they're beautiful. The real problem isn't the people other than Jesus who get to perform miracles either. That's wonderful. The real problem with miracles is what happens when we don't get them. That's the real problem with miracles. The real problem with miracles is that some people get them and some people don't. In the late 90s, uh, Steve Martin, or early 90s, Steve Martin did a movie called Leap of Faith. And in Leap of Faith, he plays a faith healer. Well, actually, he plays a con man who portrays a faith healer. And in it, he professes or confesses that being a faith healer is the easiest con out there because if the person doesn't get healed, you can always say they didn't have enough faith. They didn't pray hard enough. And if that were real, that would be sad. That would be victim blaming. And through the centuries, there have been some false faith healers. There have also been some genuine faith healers. But if the miracle doesn't happen, someone has to be blamed. The tendency is to think that it's our fault when we don't get the miracle. That it's our fault. That we didn't do the right things. That we didn't deserve that bit of grace from God. But that's just not how miracles work. Miracles are not ordinary. They are nothing that we can expect or manipulate or bank upon. They are not guarantees. Miracles are extraordinary. Miracles are something outside of the norms of regular, rational, scientific society. Miracles are rare, but they do happen. Uh, There is a woman by the name of Kate Bowler. Kate Bowler is a theology professor at the University of Duke um, uh, Theological School. She is uh, 35 years old. She is a wife. She is the mother of a young child. And she has spent the majority of her academic profession, her academic career, writing about the theological implications and the history of the prosperity gospel. Uh, The prosperity gospel in the United States is if you do these things, then you will be blessed, essentially. There's much more to it, but that's kind of what she writes about. Uh, Well, a few months ago, she found out suddenly that she was diagnosed with stage four cancer. Doesn't have uh, very long to live. So she wrote an article, uh, I believe it was in um, the New York Times, New York Post. And in that article, it's called uh, Death, the Prosperity Gospel and me. And in the article, she says that she realizes that scientifically, from a scientific point of view, why she has cancer. She says she realizes that from a scientific point of view, cancer means that it has attacked her body, that human bodies are fragile, and that they are susceptible to sickness. But then she says, as a Christian, she understands The most I can say about why I have cancer, medically speaking, is that bodies are delicate and prone to error. As a Christian, I can say that the kingdom of God is not yet fully here. So we get sick and we die. (coughs) Miracles happen, but they don't happen to everybody and we don't know why. Miracles are a sign 
They are a breaking in of the kingdom of God. And they don't happen to everyone or all the time because the kingdom of God is not yet fully realized. One day, everything will be in glory and all will be imperfect, but it just isn't there yet. Miracles are signs that God wills life. Miracles are signs that God is working in this world in ways that we don't always understand. You think when Peter and John went to the temple that day that this guy was the only guy who was sick? Absolutely not. There were tons of people who were sick there that day. Why didn't they get healed? I don't know. Did he deserve it more than the rest? I doubt it. All we know is that God chose that person and not others to be healed. That miracle was a sign even just a glimpse of God at work in our world, a sign that God wills life now and forever. Amen.